morning, everybody. It is Monday morning. It is marvelous Monday morning because we're going to talk about two things that really matter. The rock sale in ball ground. Rarely are the doors open to the rock store that belong to the rock man in ball ground. But listen, y'all, get your checkbooks out, get your cash out, come downtown and be with us Saturday morning, April the 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you will have an opportunity to make ball ground rock. And you will want to rock it as you leave there with big bags full of rocks. There will be rocks and trinkets and gems and all kinds of things available for you to buy. This doesn't happen often. And the, the uh, mayor pretend and the mayor wannabe are here today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, we're pretending that we're going to change mayors. You know, in a couple of years, we are changing mayors. Probably Because so, I yeah, think our mayor's going to retire. So, yeah. He's going to retire. He yeah. says he's yeah. going to retire. And I said, well, you can't do that. You'll be bored to death. But yeah. I bet he will. Welcome, our almost mayor and our almost mayor. Guys, let's talk a little bit about Mike Smith, who is the author. Y'all, I cram this down your throat every day because I want everybody to have a piece of this. And I want you to know that God keeps showing up. Mike wrote it. And his buddy Daryl, you met him when he wrote a book. And let me tell you what I did with my book. And you will be, you will appreciate this. Out of, out of the grandkids, I have two out of six who love to read. And one of them is in Michigan and one's in Alaska. So I sent the book you gave me to my granddaughter in Michigan. And I thought, this kid loves to read. So I averaged sending her about four books a month, and she just reads and reads and reads. And I thought, isn't that so weird? Because um, they're, one's in late 30s, one's in early 40s, and they still love to read. And it started when their moms read to them as children. Yeah. Isn't well, that important? That's, that's right. yeah, yeah. yeah, isn't that important? Sure so, is. Now, Daryl, how have book sales gone? Good? Good. They, uh, very well. I mean, you know, we you have this cycle of, you know, they little interest. We, uh, of course, Evelyn helped me with the mm -hmm. with the signing, and uh, it's been great. And um, um, you know, really love to sell more because that money goes to FCA, which mm -hmm. I work, represent. But yeah, right. it's been great. Tell folks about FCA for the people who didn't see you last time. Uh, Fellowship Christian Athletes. Uh, we um, we disciple. Uh, you know, one of Jesus' commands was to go make disciples, and so uh, one of the things we do is we meet with student athletes, coaches, and we share devotions and uh, have resources for them to make disciples of their teams, uh, their players, and then uh, we get to go into the schools, you know, normally uh, before school and then at a, at a team meeting, and we, uh, we just share the gospel, and the uh, Lord does the rest. Did you see where two weeks ago a nine-year-old girl was trying to do a chapter at school of a prayer group and they wouldn't allow that to happen? I did not. And it was on the news day, for two days it was on the news. It was on my channel, not the other channels, but it was on my channel, Fox. And, um, and they interviewed her and it was very strange that they had allowed all kinds of other things that I would not go to that meeting to be done at school but the prayer was oop, kicked it out. Wow. And I thought, how weird is that? Because we are in a town that is, um, we have a little bit of diversity, we have a little bit of growth, we have a little bit of change, but we gather together and pray. And that's why y'all are here today. We're gonna talk about that day. But we wanna show some photos first because my driver, my driver was Dale Earnhardt Sr all my life till the man went to be with Jesus. And now my driver is Chase Elliott. And my driver won the Texas race yesterday. Did y'all watch the race? I did, yes. No. Well, it was like the last four laps was half a lap wreck, half a lap wreck, half a lap wreck. And if you know anything about racing, every time you half a lap and wreck, you use fuel that you really need to get to the finish line. And so we were really happy that Dawsonville's great guy, Chase Elliott, won the race. And we love that he won because he is a winner in every single way. It's one of the best interviews I ever did. <clears throat> and he was 13 years old when I interviewed him at Lanierland. 
He was on top of his game then. He is a really good guy. And look who won first place again, catfishing. The Hall of Fame fisherman, my son-in-law. And I'm so <laughs> excited <coughs> because it means it didn't cost him money to fish this weekend. He made money, so that's always a good thing. He, uh, Lonnie and Donnie are truly Jesus' fishermen and men, and they say without him and without the praise they give him, they could never do what they do. They could never be allowed to be world champions. They are amazing, amazing guys. And you talk about giving back, they give back and they give back. They've raised money at the nursing home in Jasper for many years doing a fish fry where they buy Christmas gifts. And there you go, Hall of Fame member. Awesome. That's the Fountain Boys, and uh, they are absolutely amazing. And uh, if you've ever had a roof put on by them, you know you trust them, you love them, and you let your roof sit and wait until they can do it. Now this, I did a little trivia last night. This was our first flip, and it's a 1940s house, and this was in 1980-something. <laughs> and from there, I asked a bunch of people, I said, tell me what you can pull up there today in order. And you know what you can pull up there today in order? A Wendy's hamburger, because when I sold the property to Wendy's, I took that old 1940s house, we jacked it up, we moved it seven miles, we remodeled it, and it was our first flip. And it was really weird because the, the guys were going to come in and demo it. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. We have sanded these hardwood floors. They were absolutely beautiful. We're saving this house. And that was over 30 years ago. Now, that's when house flipping was fun. This is in memory and in honor of all the ladies who worked for me in Appalachian Memories because as Mother's Day comes, our florist was so busy. Mother's Day is the busiest, busiest day behind Valentine's Day. And we all got together. We did trade shows. We traveled the country. And we produced gift items for Kroger, Publix, Winn-Dixie, chain stores all over the Northeast. And uh, yeah, even those Yankees like Southern stuff. So we had such a good time. And in honor of Miss Granny Olga Burgess, this is, this is a tribute to you and all your hard work. She's in heaven now and she's resting, but boy, did we produce a lot of stuff for a lot of stores. And uh, everything you see was hand painted, handmade. The saws, the wood, the fabric, we sewed every single thing. All of this, Bonnie Lacey uh, worked her fingers to the bone. And to this day, we talk about how much fun we had doing that. So find something you want to do that's fun now, Mike. Who is David Green? No, oh, he's a great quarterback at Georgia. He time. was. He was. Oh, he yeah. was. And that is an autographed jersey that I was lucky enough, Santa brought it to a little boy at my house one year. And uh, it was exciting. And then the other shirt is actually signed by the whole team. Wow. And Santa had to work very, very hard to get that. And uh, I don't know why it's not showing. Is Are we moving to that next shirt? Is it moving or is it going to sit there? But the next shirt had Musa Smith on it. There you go. It had every single player. And it was really, really cool. And I think it was an SEC game that they lost. Uh -huh. I think they lost that one. But um, I can't remember. I can't remember if they were playing Arkansas or LSU. But uh, we did go to a couple that they lost. And it, it's bad when you pay what those tickets cost and they lose. You yes. Know? <laughs> yes. It was really bad. But, but Georgia, Georgia is a cool place. Now this, this is the deal. This is, look at that fish. Now that would uh, feed about 50 people, but you probably wouldn't want to eat that one because he's probably an older gentleman. <laughs> And uh, I would say he might be tougher than shoe leather. So, so what would we sure. th say? Yeah. But they not only won first place on the tournament, they won big fish. <coughs> and uh, it's a big deal. And uh, we're wow. so, so happy and so thankful that they've won again because they give God all the glory in everything they do. Just a really, really cool weekend. And this is uh, last week they got second place. And Lonnie says second place is first place winner. I mean, first place loser. So he's not he's not into he's not into second place. He doesn't like that. But this week he got first place. So, and they are praising the Lord as they always do. And uh, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. What a blessing! What a blessing! What a blessing! And yeah, that fish I think it weighed fifty three pounds. Wow. And today, please pray for Israel. 
please, please, please pray for Israel because we are seeing things in our world. America's not as strong as we once were, and uh, America is showing her colors in uh, not being strong and not standing up and supporting those that we should, and it, it worries me. It worries me a lot because I've got little grandkids that are going to be left in this mess when I go to be with Jesus. So. It's a lot to think about. Okay, guys, let's talk about the National Day of Prayer when we come back. We're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, let's talk about the National Day of Prayer. And in our country, we are allowed to pray together. So, um, y'all, if you do a morning prayer, if you do an afternoon prayer, there are so many people in our community who need your prayer. But more than that, we need to come together, and we're going to talk about that day, and that we're going to invite people to the Wheeler House, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So we'll be back in just a minute with that. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I'm grown up, grown, grown up, up every way and every, every way, way care and take care of you. You're my grown up and I know you're there. I'm your grown up and you know I care. Cause it's you and me and me and, me and, me and you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you. in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories. Writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Sports are happening. The Masters is going on. Chase Elliott won a race. We don't know what's going to happen with who knows. Who knows with all the baseball teams coming out. Braves could win this year. Wouldn't it be nice if they did the whole thing again? Oh, yeah. You know, it's really cool when they, when they do the World Series. That's really awesome. But the world today is looking at the United States. And we are showing a little weakness. We're showing a lot of weakness. But... Sometimes we don't see the strength from within. 
and the strength and the power of prayer is really a big deal. Mm -hmm. And the power of prayer can change things. Mm -hmm. We see it every single day in our lives. Now, Mike, lately I've met two people who had eight-year-old boys who were like your child, diagnosed with cancer, and did not make it. They were little boys playing baseball. Mm -hmm. And both of these ladies, and I said, <clears throat> how does God send me two friends who both, both lose, and then I'm telling them about your miracle story. Yeah, yeah. So how does God explain that? They prayed as hard for their little boy as you prayed for yours. Yeah, I never could explain it. I, uh, we would go back when my son was getting chemotherapy treatments, and we would see and meet new boys down there doing the same, and we would go back and we would ask about them, and we were told they didn't make it, and it just devastated me. And I don't know why. All I can say is God's ways are not our ways, and His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so I don't know why some make it and some don't, but I do know God is sovereign, and I do know we can trust Him in all things. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very difficult, and it it's, is hard. There, there are no answers. No. Now, last Wednesday, I had lunch with one of them, and as we ended lunch, she didn't even mention her son during lunch, and then she called me and she said, how do you, and she said, this is a weird word, how do you celebrate the death of your daughter? And I said, well, it's easy for me because it's on my birthday. Oh. So I said, you talk about God's perfect timing. She was born on Christmas Eve. Her name was Angela because of an angel. And then she dies on my birthday. Mm -hmm. So I don't need help to remember to no. celebrate my daughter. And she said, well, you know, I didn't feel like I should celebrate. I just wanted to stay in the bed and pull the cover over my head and just, you know. But she decided to get up, get dressed. We had lunch. We had a good day. Um, but then the next three days, she really, really struggled. So um, eight, nine years old, you play baseball, you have friends, you run and do the, uh, what do they ride now, little Razor scooters and all the things kids do. Then in one year. Well, I know when my son had cancer uh, and we were just totally uh, taken by surprise, I was asking my wife the question, and my pastor, where's God? Mm -hmm. Where's God? Where's God? Why did this happen? Where's God? Mm -hmm. And after we got through it all, I looked back and I could see because he healed my son, there's God. There mm -hmm. was God. And I could see even though I couldn't feel him or sense him or hear him, all through that, when I looked back, I could see he was there the whole time. But I think as people go through that, had he not made it, I think one or two things would happen. It would have drawn me closer to God or it would have driven me away from God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some people don't come back. Some right. people get driven away. Right. And that's a tragic thing. But to know that as a believer, we'll see those that we lost again mm -hmm. in Christ mm -hmm. and those that have not reached the age of accountability. We know they're with Christ. Mm -hmm. And as David said, I'll go to him. He can't come to me, but I'll go to him. Right. And so one day, God's going to make everything right. Right, right. One day. This morning I was reading about Elijah, and, and I was thinking, you know, there's so many things in the Bible that just don't make sense to me. That's right. Yeah. But if you read it all the way to the end, it'll make a little bit of sense to you, you know. And I'm thinking, there have been so many people who went through so much stuff, and there have been, you know, my daughter keeps saying, Mom, just keep Job on your mind, keep Job on your mind. Yeah. We know that the economy failed before, and we know some craziness right. happened, but keep Job on your mind. And it's so weird because in the days of the Bible, they went through much worse than we're actually going through today, and yeah. they made it. Well, you, know, you talked about sports a while ago on ESPN. I, I tape a lot of things. And with my favorite teams because I'm away from home while well, I come back and I can I can watch what they did but if I want to cheat I can look and see did they win, did they win they or lose? lose and when I when I look and say okay I'm gonna see if they won and then when I look at it I have no anxiety because I know what the end results gonna be mm -hmm. it's the same way as a believer yeah you know I've read the back of the Bible and I've read yeah. what's in front of it and I know we win yeah. And Paul says, don't be anxious about anything, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he was talking about. You know, I looked at the tape, and I know we win. Yes, you yes. Know, yeah, we're going to go through hard things, but we win, you know. Well, we go through some stuff and some stuff and some stuff. And um, sometimes it does make you bitter. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of guys in the military 
who uh, come out with positive attitudes and feeling great, and I've seen some guys who are angry and mad. And Daryl, do you have a military background? Uh, my family, yeah, uh, yeah. For folks in the military, you know, sir. My grandfather was in World War II. Uh, uncles, and so none recently, but yeah. Did they come home with a positive attitude, or you know? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, um, they were certainly changed, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. by it. And I think each war had its own, um, each conflict had its own uh, challenges, and right. and the way they, you know, maybe of uh, were, you know, talked about or whatever. But I, I think. Early earlier conflicts seemed to have a lot of pride in in the in their efforts, and it was you know the times where you did it, you know you, that's what you were called to do, and you went and served. Right. And um, it's I had a, a gentleman on who was in his 80s before we got him <clears> to be able to do a live show, and he was a Korean hero, and um, he had a hard time, you mm -hmm. know. 40, 50, 60 years later, he had a hard time talking about it. Mm -hmm. He had a hard time dealing with it, and that was Korea. That was, you know, and, and I'm not going to say the easy war. None of them were easy wars. I have a friend who was on a uh, boat that got blew up in the Pacific, and his best friend was killed, and he made it, and he had a hard time with that because he was in the water as they were blown up, and his, he was 30 feet from his friend who died, you know. So how do you explain that? And God showed up for one, and God called the other one home. That's right. yeah. So he keeps showing up, but he does things very differently. And like the two friends I have who lost their children, both of them, um, you know, one of them is amazing. And she raises um, awareness on blood drives in his honor. Mm -hmm. And they collect so many pints of blood and units of blood in his honor. And I said, how cool is that? And she said she just thought about it when they were doing chemo and going through all the things. They went, what can I do in his honor? And, and that's an amazing mm -hmm. way because right. it, it does give life. Just like Jesus gives life, the blood gives life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The power is in the blood is what the, mm -hmm. the word tells us. what they say. That's, right. that's what they say. That's, that's right. what they say. Now let's talk about the National Day of Prayer because the National Day of Prayer began many years ago and um, was kind of a small movement at first. But it grew a lot and in this crazy America where people are controversial and if you watched I watched something on YouTube last night to be honest with you I'm surprised I didn't get some really mean comments because I laid it down and let them have it these were a bunch of people in New York who were saying stupid things and I was going no 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 and I try not to respond because I don't want to be you know and then I, <laughs> and I just start typing and I responded and I'm like, you know, they don't believe in life. They don't believe in prayer. They, I don't know what they believe in. And it's scary because there's a world full of those people. Yes, that's right. How do we bring those people to understand the National Day of Prayer and to join in and see, number one, reap the rewards of prayer? Because I can guarantee you with what I went through, if there hadn't been prayers coming in, I would have given up. I would have given up, but I felt every single one of them. Exactly. I felt every single one of them, and I was like, wow, I made it through this. I can't believe I did it. And I was like, this is really strange that I came through this. So how do we bring those in who, and, and I, I wish I could remember this guy's name. His name is Nicholas, and he was interviewing people on the streets in New York. And the comments and the stupid stuff that came out of their mouth, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just thinking, well, maybe taking New York and California out of the U.S. isn't such a bad idea after all. I don't you know. Because <laughs> they really don't believe. They don't believe. Yeah, the left coast is a good uh, yes. description. <laughs> yeah. Way left. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the, um, good, fortunately, you know, um, the National Day of Prayer started in 1952. Um, it's almost as old as me, don't Con tell it. Conrad <laughs> Hilton and uh, Senator from Kansas, Carlson, they got together at the urge of Billy Graham, mm -hmm. and uh, which I thought Billy Graham what lived next door. I, I thought he lived man. next door to my grandmother because she talked to him all the time, you know, and I was like, I don't, where's Billy Graham live? He's got to yeah. be on this road somewhere. But, yeah. um, you know, so it preserved the right. To, they de declared the first Thursday in May. It was in several different things over history. 
And you can see it in different administrations how some are very emphatic about that we pray for. Uh, George W. Bush actually, you know, called on the to pray, and then we had uh, um, those that followed did not necessarily go as well. So you have this difference, but it became a you know in the law that on the first Thursday of May since 1952 that uh, all people, uh, and not just you know, it's it's predominantly Christians mm -hmm. that pray, but there are other uh, you know religions that pray, and it's so so it preserve it gives them the right to. But, and we're fortunate to where we live and uh, to be able to do it. We were approached, uh, we have a men's group, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, ball ground, and um, we were approached last year to that, kind of take that on. We had two weeks to do it. Mm -hmm. And Mike and I and uh, Jim Colossae mm -hmm. and um, uh, Dr. Bruce. Yeah. And that was kind of our, a big thing for us to pull off. And uh, so we have, you know, we just, I think, I think that the Word of God speaks for itself, and mm -hmm. so I don't have to add a lot to it. I just have to make sure I share it. Mm -hmm. And exactly. prayer, I don't know um, that we pray enough. I don't know. It says pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, if we ever needed it, you know, I'm sure, you know, they said that in the past as well, but if we ever needed it, we sure need it now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're excited about it. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, I don't know if you may talk about that on the Wheeler now. Or yes, yes. So um, <clears throat> a guy named Fred Reimers uh, with Go Church there in Ball Ground mm -hmm. approached us last year with the help of Mike Hall, you know, Mike and Beth. Yes. And um, Mike said, I don't know, but so Mike lives next to me, calls me. We bring it up at the men's group and uh, start forming how to do it. And then this year we've expanded a little bit more to where we have seven pastors or seven folks ordained mm -hmm. to give a message. And I can tell you the topics, but I'm going to have to read them. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have an agenda. It's at the Wheeler House this year. The reason we were downtown um, in the courtyard by the Barrel House last year, but the trucks go by. Couldn't I couldn't hear, couldn't hear anything. Yeah. I knew it was a good event, and I was the one emceeing, but I didn't know what we were saying. Yeah. So this year I said, we've got to do something different. So I talked to Brittany uh, Lusk and, and Lee. Um, and that, congratulations on the birth of uh, two more boys. Yeah. Two more of those and Lusk boys. All of them born on the same day. <laughs> that is crazy. April 1st. Amazing. And uh, oh, so, uh, that yeah, they got the three babies, and they're next door to me as well. Yeah, yeah. And I got Beth and Mike on one side, and Lee and Brittany on the other. But they, um, she was, you know, said, yeah, I'll block it off now. She blocked it off, and so we have it there. Um, just a lot of, we feel like the parking's better. We feel like it's more private. It, we we wanted to have it to where more people see it, you know, if they're mm -hmm. driving by, mm -hmm. but honestly to be able to get the message across right. and so i'm gonna if you don't mind i'll tell you a little bit about the, yeah. the rundown absolutely so um i do apologize for reading this i don't uh but this year uh dr bruce dr jeremy is going to be uh the mc master ceremonies we can get there two hours early and work on all our bags. yeah <laughs> yeah well we really like uh, tell them what ken says well i, I always say that uh you know jeremy has a hands-on ministry yeah and ken laster says we yeah. go to see mary and get free chiropractic care so yeah, yeah, yeah. but um we have uh, uh dr bruce will be opening this up and then i'm gonna probably mess this name up but jonathan contanzaro and uh, myself will kind of start us in a song He's uh, the uh, worship leader at uh, Canton First Baptist. Mm -hmm. And then uh, speaking on, the, there's seven topics with the National Day of Prayer, which is now an organization you can join. Mm -hmm. I think it's been around since 78. And um, uh, on family, uh, Pastor Chet Elliott from Revolution will go through, uh, open up. We speak about 10 minutes apiece. Remember that. Yeah. On, ch on church... On church, uh, we're going to have Tim Pulver, and Tim is with Ball Ground Community Church, and that's a church plant from Lebanon Baptist down in mm -hmm. Roswell. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having several churches come to want to be in Ball Ground. On business, Pastor Trent Chambers from Sojourn Church in Woodstock. They're also looking to do a church plant there in Ball Ground. Education is another topic that Pastor Brant Fountain out of Mount Zion Baptist Church in Canton. 
on the military, Pastor Cliff Pace, Canton First Baptist, on government, our resident uh, minister, uh, Chaplain Mike Smith, and uh, on arts and entertainment, Pastor David Stein from Revolution Church, and then we'll have a group kind of song at the end, Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have y'all ever heard Mary sing? Uh, how? Yeah, I, I had her here on the show years and years and years. I, Sixteen years ago. It's crazy, but oh my gosh, what a beautiful, beautiful voice. So yeah, we should encourage Mary to be there singing. Yeah, we may uh, may get her yeah, up there. She's amazing. Take my place if I'm, yeah, and I'm just up there holding Dr. Dr. Jeremy couldn't be Dr. Jeremy without Sweet Mary. That's, no, it wouldn't you talk work. about a combination. It's a yeah. great team. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Let's talk about a team. Okay, you have a great wife. You have a great wife. Mm -hmm. The two of you and the two of you together make life better for everybody around you. How hard is it to make it work in today's world? Well, I've always said, and I was able to speak at uh, my daughter's <laughs> wedding, and I always told them that, and showed them the triangle of Jesus at the top and the husband down at one corner and the wife at the other. The closer you get to Jesus, the closer you get to each other. And point being, if we don't put Christ first in the marriage, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. It just won't work. It'll become selfish, mm -hmm. you know, and not be uh, sacrificial. Me, 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 me. me. Yeah, yeah we, me, 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 We me, need me. to do things for others and serve each other. Mm -hmm. and, and so many people get that wrong these days and I think that's why people split in marriages because uh, they think of themselves you know I, I love Rick Warren's book uh, The Purpose Driven Life and the very first sentence in it says it's not about you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well we got to look in the mirror and say it's not about you mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about Jesus absolutely absolutely and everything that we do yeah 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 and during did you have some knee surgery you had knee surgery. I've, I've got knee surgery. I had one done, and then I've got another one May the 13th that replaced the other yeah. one. Left me. Have you ever had any crisis in your life that your wife had to be there and, oh, and yeah. make things better for you? Oh, yeah. Probably daily yes. for me. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a lot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we, that's what my friends and family say. Be quiet, Mike. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll just say this. He, he, had a, he had a few weeks ago, and that's why we had to postpone right. us being on here. He lost his voice for a week, and his wife actually said that's the best week of mm -hmm. marriage they've ever had. Yeah. That's what she that's funny. admitted. But. She didn't say it to everybody, but she said it. No. I love it. Yeah. No, I've had, um, Sherry's been, my Sherry's been great. Um, she, she, we put Christ first, um, and then she's always been able to be, she's been my biggest supporter, mm -hmm. you know, and um, she's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, as they say, a lot. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I do a lot. I have a lot going on, mm -hmm. and she uh, she's always been there to help me. Uh, right. And uh, two things she says um, that I think are kind of significant in my life is that she'll say, "Now, Daryl, um, well, you might could have said that different," yeah. and says, Instead "Let me know. Been in a nice way. Let me know that maybe I should rethink that." Mm -hmm. Second thing is she'll say sometimes, "You're not as funny as you think you are." <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing that um, it, it was good information to, uh -huh. to know but uh -huh. yeah so we've had uh, you know I think a couple is a couple and you can't go through things alone if you're mm -hmm. you got to be a couple to do it right. and you got to be a team yep. and and teams change I mean you got to be flexible and change and we're different than we were when we first got married what if either one of you my grandmother dealt with it 37 years old my grandfather came down with multiple sclerosis and she became his caretaker at 37 mm -hmm. years old he lived to be 63 mm -hmm. so all those years she was his caretaker mm -hmm. there was no um, home health there was no hospice there was nothing mm -hmm. and I watched her and she was the greatest example in my life because she didn't get bitter, she didn't get angry, mm -hmm. she just took care of him because that was her duty, mm -hmm. to take care of her husband. Right. And I can remember Saturdays like it was yesterday, trying to help him get out of the hospital bed into his wheelchair to come into the living room because they had one TV. Now that I think about it, we could have taken the TV in his room and it would have been so much easier than moving this dead weight body man. Right. But we always took him in the living room to watch wrestling 
and I can remember it like it was yesterday. And Granny would say, I want you to look at that blood on Freddie Blassie. And I said, Granny, it's not real. Hush now, hush now, you yeah. know. But that was, you know, even though he was, he was nonverbal anymore, but she knew he loved wrestling. So four o'clock, get him up. We put him in the wheelchair. We take him in the living room. And, and I'm just like, how, how loyal, how devoted, how loving. And she never got bitter and angry. And I used to watch and think, one day it's going to be bad, you know, because it was, it was hard. And, and he, was, he was six foot two, and he was hard to move around. And it took a lot of effort for both of us to move him around, change him, you know. It, but never once did she say, I can't do this anymore. Never once yeah. did she say, this is not my bag. Mm -hmm. She took it on. Well, I mean, she was committed to the vow she made in mm -hmm. sickness and in health. Mm -hmm. And she followed through with it. Yeah. And to be a caregiver is a very, very hard thing oh to do. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I learned that through my mother. Uh, my brother and I tried to help her, and uh, she had dementia and some disabilities as well. We tried to keep her at home as long as we could. Uh, we'd stay the night with her and had someone come in during the day, but we got exhausted. Oh, yeah. And so we had to put her in assisted living, and then mm -hmm. we'd go by and see her almost on a daily basis up mm -hmm. where I lived. She was close. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a hard thing to be a caregiver. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, when Grandpa died, he was at Grady Hospital in Atlanta. He developed pneumonia, and I went to see him and took him some Jello, and I will never forget it. I still don't eat Jello to this day because right. I just every day that's all I could take him was Jello, and I was like, oh my gosh. So I left the hospital and I came back to Granny's, and and she said, Suge, they just called, and he's gone to be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how cool is that, that I got to see him right before he left. I wish I'd been there, but right. he was in a ward at Grady Hospital. If you can imagine, mm -hmm. have y'all ever been to Grady Hospital? Yes, I have. It is like a battle zone. Mm -hmm. It is like a battle zone. And this was in the 60s. So he's in this ward of people who don't have insurance, don't have any kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. And and there that's where he took his last breath, but I'm so glad that it wasn't at home for Granny to deal with. And right. so God had a perfect plan. Right. You exactly. Know? She kept him at home until just a few days before he passed and he developed pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And so God did show up, Amen. you know. And he showed up with the giving my grandmother that grace to do this. Because I would think there were days that he would throw things at her, you know, because he'd be frustrated he couldn't speak anymore and he right. couldn't feed himself. And, and men get frustrated. Do y'all ever get frustrated if you can't accomplish something? Uh, yeah, I mean, big big time. Yeah. I mean, I would uh, go visit my mother on my birthday one time and she had dementia and she would do things that uh, were unexpected. So I was there on my birthday and we were out in the lobby and she tried to take off the blouse that she was wearing and I mm -hmm. couldn't handle it. So I had to... Uh, get some help and she just said, you just go ahead, we, we got your mom, you mm -hmm. know. So it was a great yeah. birthday present, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I did, it was hard. It yeah. was hard because you don't know what they're gonna do dementia yeah. wise, and yeah. she, uh, but she she never got mean or, uh, or angry. She just didn't understand a lot of things. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it's hard for a caregiver to, yeah. but Jesus says, and he showed us how, you love them no matter what. Right. No matter what they say or do, you love them. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And, and when we look at the days today, um, there are so many people hurting. And just in our area, y'all both work with the food bank, and you've seen right. what, taking food to families. Exactly. Yeah. Families who don't have a meal, don't have any ability to get another meal, and you're like, holy cow, how's this going on in America today? How is it going on in America today? Mm -hmm. Why aren't we doing better? I would say, and I know a lot of churches do a lot of things, but, but I think the church has, in that respect, failed. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the church back in... Didn't we used to take care of widows and widowers? Exactly, and yeah. that's how it started out, and that's mm -hmm. how Jesus said do it, mm -hmm. and, and, and yet we dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. Now, so many churches do good things, really good things, but a lot don't. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as believers, we take care of our own, and we haven't. Mm -hmm. You know, and other organization has stepped up, you know, in the way of like Dominic's Mission, who do a great job, and others like that. But uh, it shouldn't be made up to others. It mm -hmm. should be the church. And, uh, yeah. you know, we still have opportunities as churches to do that. And some do a great job, but uh, I think we dropped the ball on that. Do y'all ever, either one of you, visit nursing homes? I have. Yes. That is an eye opener and a 
mind boggler because you leave there going. Um, I, I was taking care of somebody who had nobody, nobody. And I would take her clothes, I would take her snacks, I would take her food, and, and when you outlive your children and there's nobody, just imagine that. Mm -hmm. You know, we think we've got something bad going on in our yeah. life, yeah. and then we think about those people who have outlived their kids, they're sitting there staring out the window, and nobody ever comes to see them. That's right. Yeah. That's a hard and thing. It's, it's very hard. And, and last year we did this, um, one of the nursing homes called and said, would you help us do something for our residents? And I made five phone calls. Not one person said, no, I can't help. All five people. Mm -hmm. And we went, ding, 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 ding. We fixed all these goodie bags. We did it all. And it was just such a blessing to us. It wasn't yeah. such a blessing to them because we did it, but it was such a blessing to each of us. And, the, mm -hmm. and everybody involved said, that felt so good. Yeah. It felt so good. Yeah. And, and that's what we ought to all kind of look at. What can we do to feel better yeah. for somebody else? Well, Jesus told us we'd feel good about it because he said it's better to give than receive. Mm -hmm. And then Paul said it the same way. So it makes you feel great to mm -hmm. help somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and that's exactly the example Jesus gave us when he was on this earth. Right. Somebody had posted something on Facebook, and I shared it the other day, and then I was told that the nursing homes don't accept clothing for people, but it was somebody who volunteers at the nursing home and said that <clears throat> she goes and helps dress and bathe some patients, and that this one person only had wholly terrible clothes and said, could you bring her some clothes? And then I get a message that says, well, we have no room for storage. You can't bring clothes. And I'm like, what? A nursing home makes lots of money, lots of money. Mm -hmm. And you can't make a closet for residents who don't have new clothing. And I'm like, holy cow. So my goal this year is to contact different nursing homes and say, if you have a need, we want to supply that need. Because you could go through your closet, you could go through your closet, Sherry could go through her That's closet, right. Diane could. Yep. We could come up with clothes to close the world because exactly. we all have way too much stuff. You're right. Mm -hmm. And and you think about that person sitting there, two buttons were missing off of her shirt and she had a hole in her pants. And that was what she had in this world. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse for that. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse for that. So this year I'm going to drive the nursing homes crazy. And I'm going to say, if you don't have a closet, I'll just keep a closet at my house and I'll bring you clothes weekly, whatever, <clears throat> whatever we can do. Because if you're dressed well, you feel well. Yeah. You know, you feel well. Right. And if you have a new shirt, even if it came from a thrift store, you feel better. You're exactly right. And that's a great idea, what you're doing. I just think we need to, I got to get the nursing homes on board to say, yes, we can provide you with a space and just have a rack of men's and a rack of ladies, mm. you know, and have various sizes. Right. Yeah. Mm. I, I think of hand-me-down clothes or so, you know, like you did when we were growing up and mm -hmm. you get hand-me-downs and so forth. And I had a cousin I just found out the other day, he spoke at a funeral for one of our relatives and he looked at me and he said, Mike was my favorite cousin and I never knew that. <coughs> and then I found out why. He said, uh, Mike, even though I'm a year older, he was larger physically and so I would get his clothes that were handed down. And that's why he liked me so much. He would yeah, always cool. check me out when we had family <laughs> gatherings saying, I'll get that I'll get later that on. Next. I'll get that later on. Well, I that's why that. he hung around me. So yeah. uh, I yeah. never knew that. Hand-me-downs are good. Yeah. 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 He knew he was going to get something pretty good. Yeah. yeah. We did something about 10, 12 years ago called Share and Tell. And it started because one of my friends, Alicia Bridgman, has tons of pocketbooks. And every time I'd see her, she'd have a different pocketbook. And I never change pocketbooks. I mean, like my granddaughter gave me the pocketbook I carry today, and I've carried it two years. And I just, I don't change pocketbooks. I don't know why I'm guilty, I guess. But we did this thing called Share and Tell. And I got all my friends to donate different sizes of clothes, shoes, and pocketbooks. And then we gathered a group of women from a church. And it was a church in a very poor area where a lot of people had lost jobs. And we provided lunch for them, and then we had music, and then we said, if you'd like to share and tell, why would you like to choose a new outfit today? And one of the ladies chose one of my outfits, and um, it was white linen, and fat ladies don't wear white linen. <laughs> fat ladies do not wear white linen. If you'll notice, I wear black every day. <laughs> That, that outfit was very expensive and hung in my closet for like two years. And I said, there ain't no way this girl is putting on that outfit because I look like a sheep walking down the street. So I never put it on. This lady's son was graduating from high school, the first person in their family to graduate. 
and she chose that white outfit. Mm. And I was so excited wow. to see her eyes because it wasn't just white, it had some floral on it, you know. And I was so excited. And I said, I saw her wearing it two or three times and it just made me feel better every time I saw her wear it. And I thought, well, she doesn't look like a sheet. <laughs> you know? So it's all in perception, exactly. you know. I saw myself as a sheet walking down the street. <laughs> and I, uh, I, no, no, you can't do that. Yeah. But if we can, you know, go to your closet, go to your kitchen, go to yourself mm. and give to somebody else. We all have too much. The um, yeah. theme of the National Day of Prayer this year is thankfulness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great we all have so much to be thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you, you know, if you don't have, feel like you have enough joy, you know, you wake up, maybe I'm not as joyful. I've been practicing being thankful. You know, if I start mm -hmm. out being thankful, then I get more joy. It just doesn't work the other way. But that's interesting about giving mm -hmm. away makes yeah. you thankful. Yeah, so. yeah. And we, you're exactly right. We all have too much stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, good stuff, and we, mm -hmm. we, we, we accumulate it. We need to give away stuff mm -hmm. and yeah. not get more stuff. Yeah. I have a friend who passed away last Thursday, and saint, she was a saint. She was her husband's caretaker, and I'm so worried about what's going to happen to him, but he has family there, and I'm sure they'll take care of him. But Sandra was Jack's caretaker, and they were married over 60 years, the sweetest, sweetest couple in the world. Well, I gave her a lot of my clothes, and I would fix a box, and I would ship it, and then I would clean out the closet again, I'd fix another box, and a lot of this had tags on it, I mean, brand new stuff that I bought, never worked. That's like Minnie Pearl's hat. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. And so finally, Sandra said, Sherry, I won't live long enough to wear all these clothes. Find somebody else. She said, do you mind if I share some of these? I said, oh my gosh, yes, share. And she found people at church who she could share with. Mm -hmm. So it was me going to my closet. Didn't cost me anything. It had already cost me money. Lord knows how long ago. And I do buy good brands, so they last forever. And, and it was so cool because then she got to share. And mm -hmm. so it blessed me to bless her. It blessed her to bless somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's like the loaves and the fishes. Mm -hmm. You just start and you just do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. We've got to give back. Now tell people how they can get involved if they want to come and be there that day. What time we when, What time do we assemble? We assemble at 9 and we'll be over at 1030. So just come, to, just come straight to the Wheeler House. It's off uh, Gilmer. Uh, ferry there up, mm -hmm. up up the hill going out of town mm. on the left and uh, we're going to have you know coffee and tables there and they just it's no no cost just just simply bring you prayers and a mm -hmm. joyful heart and uh, mm -hmm. um, hopefully not only do we come together and pray over ball ground but we could pray over those seven topics as well as the nation mm -hmm. and the leaders um, and even dates back like we said till earliest I think they said they had it was in the colonial days where they asked for prayer uh, during mm -hmm. that time so um, we'll start at 9 uh, and we'll be over by 10 30 and uh, who's praying for the children I can't remember on your list well family okay will be Ch uh, Chad Elliott and um, so he brings into that piece and mm -hmm. uh, I believe that's right yeah the church is uh, will then be Tim Pulver which is it, and I just, I pick them to topics based on a pray, prayers that I have or what I hear. And they're um, starting a church there and uh, uh, Ball Ground Community Church. And it just happened to hit that that would be the one that they do. And, mm -hmm. you know, so others. And then, uh, for example, um, Pastor Cliff was in the military and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it hits on all aspects. And, and military also has first responders in there too, mm -hmm. Mike, being chaplain at the fire. Uh, fire station but um, we're we're hopeful that uh, and thankful what all we whoever comes but it's a little difficult you know at that time in the morning some people working and all but it can also uh, nationally they start at 10 we're mm -hmm. starting a little earlier but nationally it starts at 10 but just you know maybe stop at that time if you can't come and pray mm -hmm. for those things absolutely if you do come there's plenty of parking area right mm -hmm. next to it so mm -hmm. no problem looking for a place to park mm -hmm. so that's a good mm -hmm. thing and if you have prayer requests they can also you're mm -hmm. on facebook and you're on mm -hmm. facebook mm -hmm. yeah. so and we can lift them up at the men's group too if they'll yeah. let us know i would like to give a shout out for jim and, and jeremy and mike mm -hmm. and 
and um, the, the, the group, the men's group itself. Um, we now, why did y'all decide to form this group? <laughs> well, well, this is the guy that started it right here. Well, um, so I went to see Mary, and I got free chiropractic care. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, so I tell Jeremy about it, and uh, so uh, we were just kind of talking about we needed something, and I was talked into running for city council, and I would go around house to house and not. I voted them. for you. And thank you. I did I, indeed. I know you told me. I'm outside of city indeed. limits, yeah. or I yeah. would have voted for yeah, you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I went over to the cemetery and dug up two of my relatives. <laughs> <laughs> and <before> you did. <laughs> we, we needed a few more. Yeah. But uh, right. but I would go to knock on the door and, and I would have a card and on one side it told about me and the other side told about the campaign, and at the end of my spiel they would say what are you and they were trying to figure out what party affiliation I was was with and I said I'm just a sinner saved by grace and I'd see this just this black hollow look and just scary looking you know mm -hmm. and I'd go walking around and um, take my little dog Charlie at the time mm -hmm. with me and he was a good conversation piece Briggs even went mm -hmm. but um, I talked to Jeremy I said something's missing we need to pray over ball ground we need to have something like that so we mm -hmm. started that and we had uh, about five or six of us originally. Uh, Mike came, we got Mike and uh, Jeremy and Josh, my son in law Bagby, and uh, Ken Lassiter. Um, and uh, Charles Jenkins was one of the first ones we had. And we, we had like five or six, and we just met the, at the coffee house, the barrel house, and we talked about our own um, journey, spiritual journey, for about first three meetings honestly mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. just need you could tell we needed something to share mm -hmm. and then we started forming kind of uh, how it, how it would um, how would we do that and so the premise was we all have a ministry and this was a chance to come together and lift each other up pray for each other and for the leadership of ball ground and for the citizens of ball ground and become uh, a chance to also put that into application by helping the neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. with the, with Dominic's mission, mm -hmm. with if we found uh, Mary's always good at finding someone who needs something done mm -hmm. at their home and going and fixing that. So that's kind of how it started, and mm -hmm. then we got larger in number, and um, we isn't that a great problem to yeah, have? Yeah, and we oh, moved yeah. to, to find uh, more Christian men in today's world. We moved to exactly. the upper room. Uh -huh. Miss Lisa has holy yoga, uh -huh. and uh, we moved up yeah. there, so we meet in the upper room, which mm -hmm. is kind of significant. And mm -hmm. we um, we've had people come and go, and sometimes the time frame doesn't work out for everybody. But um, it's been a it's been I will say this: it's two of my best days in mm -hmm. the month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I enjoy it. It's uh, and it's a very eclectic group. I mean, it's got like varied backgrounds, and we've got two or three ministers that are there um, mm -hmm. we have people coming and going we have sometimes speakers a lot of testimony um, it's it's uh um, does he keep showing up he keeps showing he up. he does every every time <laughs> he does every day yeah. and he, one bring, of, he brings mike with him <laughs> one of the subtle things about it with uh, dr bruce is the fact that we sit in chairs up there and the <laughs> chairs are so uncomfortable that after the <laughs> meeting we all need adjustments <laughs> Smart. That's by design. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure it yeah. is. Yeah. I think Mary part. told him to do it. Yeah. 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 yeah, new but, business. But it, um, it is, it's been a great group, and we, we, um, I get challenged a little bit. To how do we continue to make it mm -hmm. relevant in the com community to where we're doing the application piece mm -hmm. as well as the study? Mm -hmm. um, we have Mike and Jeremy and and Ken usually lead us we kind of I'll ask them to rotate that mm -hmm. um, you know I started out trying to do it and that's not my gift mm -hmm. is to lead uh, I don't mind going to a coach's huddle and talking application to sports but mm -hmm. when it comes to the de various groups these guys are a lot more they're so much mm -hmm. better at that than me mm -hmm. um, and then I just uh, you know, I just bug people on the street, walking them with my dog to come to the meeting. You know, <laughs> I love it. Did we find the music, y'all, some Sunday? Do we have that? Yes. I want to share something with y'all because you are the mm. Vietnam era. We all were mm. the Vietnam era. We grew up during a time that we were at war. The world is at war today, and if World War Three breaks out, mm. possibly we're all going to have to turn to one person for answers and everybody in the world will turn to that same person if they know him 
If they don't know him, it's time to know him. So we want to share a song. This was done by Bobby Don Bloodworth, who is from our communities. And um, he also did the song Playing in the Dirt Again. So <laughs> that is, this is Diane's theme song, That's Playing right. in the Dirt Again. That's for sure. But, but just listen to the words of this song and know that um, we can pray for America to come out of this. We can pray for the wars to stop in the world. And we can pray for God to hold out his mighty hand and you take his hand you just take his hand mm -hmm. how hard is that mm -hmm. how hard is that it's very very simple so here we go bobby don bloodworth Some Sunday in the morning Before daylight with little warning The guns will all go silent and Our children will come home And the day will still begin And our kin will still be kin And Monday will be Monday once again Some Sunday come the daylight The truth will bathe in far away light And those who chose to close their eyes Will see the world again And our kin will still be kin And our friends will still be friends And Monday will be Monday once again Oh, some Sunday. Oh, some Sunday, the sun will rise with open eyes and dare the fog to stay. Oh, some Sunday, oh, some Sunday, if we don't rise some Sunday, then we wish the world away. Some Sunday hearts are pumping We'll finally read that book we're thumping And the pages will remind us of The promises we made And our kin will be okay And our friends won't be afraid And Monday will be just another day Oh, some Sunday Day come the Savior when man shall stand for his behavior. Which part of the shall not kill? Did you not understand? And when the wayward winds of war have blown shut heaven's door, then Monday can't be Monday anymore. Oh, some Sunday. Some Sunday the sun will rise with open eyes and dare the fog to stay. Oh, some Sunday, oh, some Sunday, if we don't rise some Sunday, then we wish the world. Some Sunday in the morning Before daylight with little warning The guns will all go silent And our children will come home Thank you to two gentlemen that I love, respect, honor, I don't know how I'd make it through the day without knowing you two guys were leading the National Day of Prayer in Ball Ground. Please come out and be with us again. This is the first Thursday. First Thursday, May the 2nd. May the 2nd at 9 a.m. at the Wheeler House. Come and join us. I hope to see you there. Bye, everybody.